Evening, I mean, uh, good evening. Welcome to prayer meeting. We open our prayer meeting with our devotional from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 20, and then we'll read into chapter 6 and finish with verse 10. We might call this Paul's ministry, our example. In chapter 5, verse 20 and 21, the Bible says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The purpose of ministry, whether it be Paul's ministry or our ministry, is to work to reconcile people with God. That's what it's all about. That's what this building's about. That's what our website, Facebook page, YouTube page, and all that kind of thing are having services on Sundays and Wednesdays and whenever we come together. It's not to occupy our time, not to try to make uh, us famous or anything, but the purpose of ministry is only to work to reconcile people with God. Our ministry is to be a selfless giving of our lives to reach people with the gospel. Christ gave up so much to make us right with God that we have an obligation to him to give our lives to reaching others regardless of our occupation or our station in life. You see, all of us are not professional ministers, but all of us are ministers. Chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, Paul says, We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. Ministry is not to be viewed as working for God. Paul says it is to be working together with God. We aren't just employees. We are fellow, fellow laborers with God. We have a vested interest in ministry uh, as well as does God. Working with God means that he takes the lead in situations so that we don't have to guess or decide what we should do for him. But we follow along with him, work together with him in bringing the message of salvation to people around us. <clears throat> also, we do not have to decide what we should tell people. The Bible tells us already what the message is. It says, receive the grace of God. That's what we are to tell people. In other words, accept what God has already done for you through Jesus. We don't have to be smart. We don't have to have all the answers. All we have to do is tell people, look, God has grace for you. Jesus has already done everything that you need. All you need to do is to accept what he's done. That's pretty simple. Even I can remember that. I think I could do that if I had to. Okay? So, in what we do and in what we say uh, as we work together with God, we must convey a sense of urgency. Paul writes, and he's quoting some scriptures here, he says, now is the right time. Now is the right time. Really, while I'm sharing this message with you, it's the right time. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Well, why? 
Well, you have no guarantee of tomorrow. Nothing is sure in this life beyond the moment that I have right now. We may not make it home tonight. Christ may return and call an end to time. God could call your name and take you out of your body. All kinds of things can happen. Today is the time of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Also, as ministers with God, we must live in such a manner that no one will stumble because of us. Very important. Our lives, both outwardly and inwardly, and up here, must be consistent with what God teaches so that no one can find fault with our ministry. Then verses 4 through 10. Paul writes a lot of things here, so uh, stick with me. Some is kind of disturbing. Some is pretty encouraging. He says, But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. What a list of contradictory things. But as workers with God, we see here from the record that Paul suffered many things that you and I may never experience. How many of us here have ever experienced shipwreck? How many of us have been put in jail? Sister Glenn, have you ever been put in jail? No. <laughs> not, not yet. Okay, I'm going to say not yet anyway. <laughs> and all kinds of things that he mentions there. But the fact still remains that we will experience some opposition to our ministry. Paul did. And many of these things were things that were done in opposition to him ministering to people. You see, people do not always appreciate our sharing the gospel with them. That is a fact. Okay? However, our attitude towards all people, whether or not they accept our efforts to minister to them, is to be long-suffering. That means to put up with any opposition or any resistance. And it's to be with kindness. And it is to be with sincere love. You know, most people can tell the difference between sincere love and you putting on an act or putting on a religious act. When we share the gospel with people, it needs to be with a sincere love, a genuine compassion and concern for people. Not putting them down, but letting them know God has the answer to your problem. God really loves you. And God has sent me to share the gospel with you. In our relationships with all people, whether they're friendly towards us, whether they are evilly disposed against us, whether they are indifferent, in our relationships with all people, we want the Holy Spirit 
to take the lead. Our goal as ministers of Christ, according to Paul, is to make many rich. Make them rich by giving them the treasures of salvation so that they can be rich in faith. So Paul's ministry is an example of what our ministry is supposed to be. I thank God that he was faithful in his ministry. Are we being faithful in the ministry that God has committed to our hands? Are we truly being workers together with God? Amen.